A lot of people keep asking me what I think about Cherry, what I think about Kadena, what I think about this, what I think about that. Here is what you could use as a guiding compass. Whenever you hear about a project promising something revolutionary, ask yourself, why haven't the other existing projects done it yet? Like if it is a brand new idea, a completely new idea, then it is worth looking at. For example, Kadena here promises us that it can do 480,000 transactions per second. Now, we all know that a blockchain follows a shared transaction system, which is why it is even called blockchain. And particularly in a proof-of-work system, decentralization means that all nodes connected to that network downloads the previous data of that network. So all the transaction history of that network is found on each and every node on that network. Now, with high transaction speed, it will mean that all these nodes connected to this network will be downloading enormous amounts of data at any given time. This is what Solana escaped and is shipping its data off to Arweave. And it does that by buying Arweave token each time it needs to store its data. So the more Solana is used, the more data it will need to store and it will have to buy Arweave tokens to do that. This indicates that each time Solana is going crazy because of its utility, it will send our Weave's price to the moon. So that is where I have a problem with this. How does it achieve 480,000 transactions per second for a proof of work blockchain? Meanwhile, keeping all its data in its blockchain. And know that if it is keeping that data on its blockchain, it means that any node that seeks to join that network will need to download all the previous data of that network. Now keep in mind, all the incoming data is processed at this speed. This is the reason why Solana compromises decentralization in the blockchain trilemma. So for a proof of work project that claims to have conquered the blockchain trilemma, I have some serious doubts. Now know that there will come a time where all these projects promising to do something revolutionary will actually have to do them so basically we are in a time where every project or any project can come up and compete with another existing project promising to do something better but there will come a time where it will actually have to prove that it can do what it claims to do so don't just invest in ideas invest in something that you really think it can come to fruition this will have a lot to do with the idea itself. Is it something that can actually work? It will also have a lot to do with the team. Bitcoin is by far the only crypto that we can completely trust without knowing the founder. We don't have that allowance. Now, Kadena was just an example. I'm not bashing on it. I'm still looking into it. Now, I have a theory for you and I want to hear your thoughts about this in the comments because as I said before on one of my TikTok videos, I will draft five cryptocurrencies that I think will do a killing this year. And to do that, I have to think outside of the box. So I need your help here. So we all know that Ethereum will soon be transitioning into a proof of stake crypto. This will be called the merge because Ethereum now functions as a proof of stake and a proof of work cryptocurrency. So after this transition, Ethereum plans to implement sharding, which is what Harmony here is doing. And that's the reason why I brought you Harmony here two months ago. Harmony will become a key competitor to Ethereum after the proof of stake merge. And also have your eyes on VeChain this year. So after this merge, Ethereum plans to implement sharding, which will make it highly scalable. That means its transaction speeds will increase tremendously. Now, if you've been following up all along, then you know that with increase in transaction speed, the data that needs to be stored will also increase because as more data is being processed, more data will need to be stored. Storage will become a problem. We have an answer for that, don't we? Now, you have to know that Ethereum does not compromise decentralization. It compromises scalability and takes decentralization and security. If you watched my video on the blockchain trilemma, this video, and I don't know why these types of videos do so poorly. These are the videos that you can use to understand all of this. I would like to come here every day and make a video and explain some stuff. But when I make these types of videos, they don't do well. So I will leave the link to this in the description. 
And yes, in my last predictive analysis video, someone was asking me what the meaning of those lines are, the red, green, and blue lines. Technical analysis for complete beginners. I take you from zero to someone who can absolutely do price predictions. I can't keep coming back to these tutorials when I am analyzing a cryptocurrency. So use the link in the description. It will take you some time, it will take you hours, but believe me, it will go a long way to help you with your own crypto projects. And if you've already followed up on these tutorials, let me know down below what you think of them. Now, coming back to Ethereum storage, here is what I think. This is the founder of Ethereum or co-founder of Ethereum as we all know. We'll come back to this in a second. For Ethereum to store its data on another project without compromising decentralization, that project itself needs to be decentralized. Now, on this channel, we all know about Stratos, we've been talking about it for a long time. Here is my theory. Fenbushi capitalist firm invested in Stratos. One of their advisors, if you watched my video on Stratos, is this guy here, the same Vitalik Buterin. He is an advisor to Fenbushi Capital. Now, advisor means any project that Fembushi Capital is investing in, he also contributes advice. So, if he thinks Stratos is a promising project, and not just any project, a storage project, and Ethereum ends up in need of a storage project, given Stratos' decentralization, it will become very likely that we could see Stratos storing Ethereum's data. This is considering that Ethereum's transaction speed become exceedingly high. Now, this is just a theory, but it is worth thinking about because if it does happen, so let me know what you think about my theory in the comments below. And yes, there are some people who still keep asking me how they can buy Stratos, how they can buy Saito. First off, this is not financial advice. This does not mean that you should go and buy the crypto. All we do here is education and perhaps entertainment. But if you want to get in on microcap projects that I talk about on this channel without buying them with Ethereum, what you do is use USDT on Git.io. I will leave my referral link to it in the description. You can send USDT from Binance or another exchange to Git.io. This is how you buy these projects. And as you create your Git.io account, be careful with the fund password. Don't mistake your account password and your fund password. Each time you will need to buy or sell, you will need to input that fund password. So do not take the fund password step lightly. Now, for those who have been asking about Bitcoin, is it still going to go low? The charts indicate that it will. We can see our death cross lingering above us here. Now, I take it that everyone who has watched my technical analysis tutorials understand what is going on here, eh? we see a head and shoulders pattern here. So this is the head, this is the first shoulder, this is the other shoulder. That brings us to this, so you see it clearly. Now, this chart is on the daily. It is also important to note that head and shoulders patterns can easily mislead you. That is the reason why we are not 100% sure that we are going to $20,000 but we are more than 60% sure that that can happen, given the death cross here. Now, this chart gives us a price target of $35,400. When it does go to that price target, we will see what other patterns will be presented in front of us. So, thanks for watching the video. I know it seemed more like a TikTok and it was scrambled. That's kind of how my brain works. Anyway, like the video if you did learn anything from it and share it with a friend if you can. And I will see you in the next video.